Remember those Warner Brothers studio stores at the mall? Oh man, those things were great. You could just find any kind of merchandise with the DC superheroes on it. You could find toys, housewares, clothing, even this shirt. That's where this shirt came from. I loved those stores. Well, on today's episode of Terrific TV Toys, we're gonna take a look at some plush goodies that came from the Warner Brothers studio stores, and they celebrate a few different TV shows in the DC animated universe. In the 1990s, Beanie Babies were big, and you could call this collection of beanbag plush toys Warner Brothers' answer to that Beanie Baby craze. <laughs> because really, um, if you look at these, they have a very similar consistency. They're filled with like little beans, I guess you'd say, and um, they're not your typical plush. They're more like beanbag toys. And they draw from several different shows that Warner Brothers Animation produced at the time in the 90s and early 2000s. So we'll talk a little bit about that. Let's start with our super folks here that you just saw a moment ago. Um, and Superman, specifically, Superman the Animated Series launched in 1996. It was a direct offshoot of Batman the Animated Series. It was a great show, and um, this is the Superman from that show with his outfit on that is um, very closely matching it. He's got his sort of silky material cape on in red, and then the boots match that material. Then he's got his very classic Superman outfit on of a blue leotard and then a stitch. Um, insignia on the front and his yellow belt and all of that. He's got the cute little swoopy thing going on with his hair. So that's Superman. We also have Supergirl. Now Supergirl in Superman the Animated Series had a different style outfit on. Supergirl has had a number of different outfits in the comics over the years, but this was definitely an original one that they created for the character in the animated series because of this white um, shorty top with the bare stomach and then the little blue mini skirt and the red boots and look at how the red boots have a bow on them that is adorable and then she's got her small red cape it only comes down to about her skirt um, with her very typical cute blonde hair and she's got a headband too she wore a little white headband in the series and then her insignia on the front is a nice stitched S. So that is the original outfit that she wore in the animated series that launched in 1996. She was the cousin of Superman, which is a very classic continuity. And I think they brought this outfit um, into the comics at one point, too. Um, next, let's get a little batty. Batman. Now, in the last episode of Terrific TV Toys, we talked about the Happy Meal toys that celebrated Batman the Animated Series from its earlier days. And I mentioned that the show was retooled around 1996 or so, and some of the character designs were updated. And Batman is one. He got a small update, not a huge one. You can see that it's reflected here in the solid black bat on his chest. So this Batman beanbag plush toy is reflecting the new Batman adventures. That's what Batman the Animated Series evolved into. And the rest of these characters here you'll see um, reflect that redesign as well. So Batman's got his long cape on the back and interestingly enough it is actually two pieces of material. It's got a dark char charcoal gray underneath and then a black overlay that's a felt material. Attracts lots of fuzzies you can see. And then he's he's just fuzzy all over. Everything on his outfit um, except for this leather-like material on the insignia um, and then the belt. Everything else is just the fuzzy fur or felt treatment and he's got that nice square jaw going on. Look at that. He is stern. You do not want to meet this guy in a dark alley. Here's Robin. Now in the new Batman Adventures, um, as I mentioned after the show was redesigned, it was a different Robin. In the Batman the Animated Series they had the typical 
Dick Grayson Robin that was the most well-known Robin from the comics but this um, this was actually in the New Batman Adventures the Tim Drake Robin they sort of skipped a Robin because at the time in the comics there had been three different Robin characters Jason Todd was the one in the middle they didn't use Jason Todd for the animated series they skipped right over to Tim Drake as the next Robin in the series and he had a slightly different outfit than the Dick Grayson Robin had in the previous series um, no green, just red and yellow and black. And so you can see that reflected here. He's got his cape with uh, the sort of shinier material on the back, um, black and then yellow on the underside. And his boots have that black shiny material too. And he's got his black hair and his black mask on. Um, so that's the Tim Drake Robin from the new Batman Adventures. And let's talk about a villain here. Here's Catwoman. In the redesign of the characters, Catwoman did get a pretty significant update um, in the Batman the Animated Series, and you saw this in the last episode when we looked at that Happy Meal toy for Catwoman. She had a gray leotard on. Well, in the redesign, she got a black leotard, so she's now wearing all black. She got a leaner look, which a lot of the characters did get a little bit leaner, thinner look in this redesign. And you can see on this beanbag toy, the material for her outfit is that leather-like material, but it's having a lot of issues years later. She is dated, let me see what she's dated. She's dated 1998. Most of these toys are 1998 or 2000. That's when you would have seen them in the Warner Brothers Studio stores. So um, after all these years, she's got some trouble here. Some of her leather-like pleather, I guess, material is rubbing away. Um, it's sort of disintegrating. Um, and then that's, that's what she is all over except for her lower half of her face. Now, the character on the TV show, for some reason, they gave her flesh a green cast. And I don't know if you can really see that coming through in this light, but it's a pale, um, sort of a mint green. And that's what they made her flesh tone in this redesign. A little bit unusual, but... That was our Catwoman. Okay, how about Batgirl next? Oh, I love my Batgirl. She's just so adorable. And she got a pretty good um, update, too, because she had a gray leotard on in Batman the Animated Series, and she also got upgraded to a all-black leotard and then just yellow trim. No blue anywhere on her outfit, just black and yellow. And with the, the stitched yellow insignia here on this toy, and then she's got her cape. The outside of it is that leather-like material that is showing a few cracks after all these years. And then underneath, it's yellow with the shinier material. And then she's got her reddish hair, um, unlike the comics <laughs> where you would see Barbara Gordon or Batgirl with that apple red hair, that unrealistic true red hair. She's got uh, hair on this beanbag toy that's a little more realistic, a little bit more like mine, which is really orangish or brownish um, red hair that we call red. Um, and then she's got her leather-like material on her cowl. And um, she is cute. Um, how about another redhead next? Poison Ivy. Now here's the true red hair. In fact, it's almost a pinky red in this light. <laughs> and Poison Ivy also in her update in the new Batman Adventures that is reflected in this beanbag toy, um, she has flesh tone legs, like bare flesh legs, whereas originally she had this green leotard, but she had green tights on, lighter green tights. So you saw that they did away with those and they made her leaner also, um, but the rest of her is basically the same from her outfit in Batman the Animated Series. And look at those green lips. Oh my goodness, green lips and green eyes. That also would be scary in a dark alley. <laughs> and another chick villain, Harley Quinn. Look at our darling Harley. I would have to say that Harley has had a few different outfits over the years in the comics, and this is the traditional comic or traditional outfit that she was created with on Batman the Animated Series because she was a character that was created specifically for that series and then she was brought into the comics later and this was her original outfit of which she's had a few variations but I will say that if you go to comic cons 
this um, Harley Quinn character is the most popular cosplayed character among females. It has to be. I mean, it's definitely right up there with the slave Leia from Star Wars, <laughs> which really shouldn't be a popular cosplay costume. If you go to Comic Cons, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But um, back to Harley, a lot of girls love dressing up like Harley, and she's had a lot of very cool outfits that they can draw from with their cosplay. So she's got a red and black Harlequin outfit with white trim. She's got her maniacal smile, and um, she is cute, too. And then the last one in this collection, this is not the complete collection of Warner Brothers Studio Store's beanbag plush toys. By the way, there were others that I'll mention in a moment. Um, but the last one that I have is Wonder Woman. So here we got a chick hero. And when I mentioned that we have different shows that we're drawing from here, you could consider this Warner Brothers toy from the Justice League and Justice League Unlimited animated series that were another offshoot of the original Batman the Animated Series. Justice League launched in 2001, um, whereas Batman the Animated Series 1992, New Batman Adventures 96, and then Superman the Animated Series 96 as well. So in Anyways, Justice League, um, because of that show, there were several of characters in this collection that drew from that, including this Wonder Woman, and she's got her very classic Wonder Woman outfit on. In fact, if you're a fan of the live-action Wonder Woman show from the 70s starring Linda Carter, you would see this as... Um, sort of a combination of first and second season outfits because the bracelets are silver. In the first season of the live action show, they used silver bracelets and then they recolored them to gold for the second season that was updated to the 70s instead of the 40s, not to digress too much. But, um, and then her bodice, um, but this, this top part, which I'm calling a bodice, is more second season than first season. So she's a combination of elements here. You can see the material that they used for her. The blue part, blue and star-spangled part of her outfit is rubbing away a little bit. This material is peeling, unfortunately. I don't want to disturb that too much more. And then she's got her red boots with a shiny material and a white stripe and white trim. And then she's got her hair, too. I love how they do their hair in these plush toys. It's so cute. Lifts right up. And she's got her tiara and her earrings as well. So more of a Justice League toy for that one. Some of the other characters that were used for this collection, also from Justice League, you saw a Flash. You saw a Martian Manhunter, John Jones, who also was a star of the Justice League shows. Um, you saw a Green Lantern, but it wasn't the, the main Green Lantern character that was used on Justice League and Justice League Unlimited, because that one was Jon Stewart. The Green Lantern that you saw in this collection was more the Hal Jordan Green Lantern. And then you also saw Aquaman, and again, not so much the Aquaman that was used um, that was introduced in Superman the Animated Series and then I think used later in the Justice League series. Not that Aquaman, it was more the Super Friends looking Aquaman with the typical outfit on from that era. Um, and then there also was Batman Beyond. Batman Beyond was yet another DC Animated Universe TV show that was an offshoot of all of this stuff, and it took the futuristic look of um, Batman years and years, decades into the future, and there was a Batman Beyond um, plush that was part of this um, collection. And there also was Penguin Joker and Riddler for some more villains from the new Batman Adventures. And then on eBay, when I was researching this the other day, there was a Shazam one too. I don't recall seeing this Shazam beanbag toy in the stores at the time, because if I saw it, I definitely would have bought it. But evidently there was a Shazam in this set um, as well. Now, one really weird thing. I don't know why this is. Look at the Batgirl. Batgirl has always been displayed in my Batgirl collection because I've always had my Batgirl figures out somewhere wherever I've lived over the years. And you saw a nice shot of them in a lot of the episodes of Terrific TV Toys in the first season. You see like a, a fast motion shot of all my Batgirls on the shelf and she is included. She's always been displayed. Look at her tag. Look at how vibrant her tag is. Warner Brothers Studio Store. Then you can see the back. You can see all this information on the back. And all of the rest of these in my collection I had put away in a box in storage for basically 15, more than 15 years. And look at the difference in, I don't know why this is, but you cannot read Supergirl's tag, or if you look at Wonder Woman's tag, 
it's even worse. I don't know why that happened. That's so bizarre. But the ones that were shut away, their tag is like, there's almost nothing to it anymore. It's almost white. And then this one, the tag, you can read perfectly. So go figure. Don't know why that is. If you have a theory, feel free to comment. Um, otherwise, thank you for watching and stay tuned for more stuff on the fabulous DC superheroes in future episodes because I got a lot of this stuff. <laughs>